sin is very costly. The wages of sin is death. Amen. And we're doing our best to live a holy life. But if we do sin, amen, we can repent. Ask God to forgive us. Amen. Amen. But His blood, praise God, washed your sins. His face stripes. Amen. You were made whole. Praise God. He was made poor that you might be made rich. That's the Word of God. Hello, welcome to Decatur Christian Fellowship. looking for new and exciting fun things to do with the kids. This is our Gaga kit that we learned about at church camp one year. The kids were super excited about it. They wanted to play the whole time we were there. So we came back, we talked to Pastor Michelle about it. The kids begged and they said yes, we could do it, we could build it. So this summer, this is what we built. And one of the really cool things about Gaga Ball is, is the name comes from an Israeli name. And the word Ga in Israeli means hit or slap. So it literally means hit, hit ball or slap ball because the purpose of the game is, is everybody gets in the pit and then you open hand slap the ball towards somebody else. If the ball hits them from their waist down, they're out. If the ball hits them from the waist up, the person that hits it is out. So it's a really safe game. We're just really excited to showcase the Gaga Ga kit. Bring your kids to church and let them play Gaga Ga ball with us.
watching us online this morning. Father, we pray for those who have come, Father God, and may have fallen away or gotten away or whatever it is that they did to get away. But Father, we pray for those people this morning, Father God, because we don't hate them. No, we don't hate them. No, 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 no. 
We don't shun them. No, we don't shun them. Father, we love them. 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 We love them, Father God. And we pray that, Father, your love would fill their hearts and they would know that we do. Glory to you, Father God. Hallelujah, that the mouth of the enemy would be shut this morning and stop deceiving the people. Father, we worship you. We give you praise for your good and your mercy endures forever, Father. Hallelujah to you, Father. Glory to you. Oh, Lord, it's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to Decatur Christian Fellowship. We are so glad that you are here this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You made it. You made it. You made it. You made it. Hey, you're back, brother. It's good to see you this morning. I've seen you online every day for the last, you know, four months, but you are here in person this morning. Praise God. We're glad you're here this morning. Glory to God. You feeling better? Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. Glory to God. Who wants to give the Lord a testimony this morning? God's done something good for you. Tell me something good God has done for you. Just stand up and say it. Come on now. Anybody in here? Come on. What? He woke you up this morning. How about you? Come on. Oh, come on now. Yes. Somebody else jump up and tell me something God has done for you this morning. Come on. Yeah, come on. who didn't know Jesus and was telling him about hell and the sinner who was there scheduled to die that day said preacher it probably sounded a little bit more British than that but anyhow he said preacher if what you have just told me is true I would crawl across the entire continent on broken glass on my hands and knees to tell everyone that I know that there is such a place that there is such a place and that they need to avoid it and how to do so. Now listen to me this morning. When you get a revelation that healing is real and you don't tell somebody about it, you might as well be keeping it from them. Are you listening to me? When you get the revelation that Jesus is real, hallelujah, and you don't tell somebody about it, you might as well be putting it in your pocket and saying, this is for me, and I'm choosing not to tell you about it because I want you to go to hell. Whoa. But that's just the same thing. Bible tells us we're not supposed to hide our lamp. Are you listening to me? Let your light shine. This world is a dark, dark place and it needs some bright lights. Are you listening to me? I'm tired of hearing about the negativity. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of hearing about people being divided on the left and on the right and on this and on that. How about we just tell people about Jesus and let him sort it out. Amen? Hallelujah. And make up our minds we're going to love each other because God is good. Hallelujah. I'm going to knock something over if I'm not careful. All right. Praise the Lord. God is good. I'm glad that you're here this morning, and I'm glad to be with you this morning. Hallelujah. I tell you what, while we're in an attitude of worship, let's go ahead and get ready and receive this morning's tithes and offerings. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. You can just keep that going. It's fine with me. Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. If you're giving in today's tithes and offerings, go ahead and take an offering envelope. They're in the seat backs in front of you. There's a pocket in the seat backs in front of you. Fill it out and uh, put that. Put your name and address on there. That way the IRS can receipt you in time of taxes. Glory to the living God because it is a tax deductible contribution. And hey, if you don't want to give this morning, don't. That's all there is to it. Amen. You're just disobeying God, but I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, no, but seriously, you are. But <laughs> I want to tell you something this morning. While you go ahead and filling out your tithes and offering envelopes, Joshua chapter one and verse eight. My wife printed this out this morning, and I thought this was so good. Joshua one eight says, "Meditate in God's word day and night, and observe." Everybody, have say, observe. observe. Observe to do it. So it says to think upon the word of God, meditate on it. And I'm not talking about crossing your legs and putting your arms out like this and going. Mm -hmm on the Word of God. That's not what meditation is. Meditation is heavy thought. Meditation is total devotion and concentration and thinking upon one particular thing. So meditate on the Word of God. Think about the Word of God, the Bible tells us to do, day and night, and observe to do it. Study to do it. Make sure you do it. So the Bible tells us, know the Word of God and then do what it says. But notice the promise that comes afterwards. I love the fact that God will put a promise after the things that He tells us to do. Choose this day whom you will serve, and it will be well with you, blessing or cursing. And then it goes on. But this one says this. It says, if you do this, you shall make your way prosperous. Now, I want you to notice here that the Bible doesn't say that God will make your way prosperous. Did you see that? Look it up. It says, you shall make your way prosperous. If you will do what God tells you to do, God will give you the knowledge to go and do I'm sorry, God will give you the knowledge to make your way prosperous. Are you listening to me this morning? Hallelujah, I think that's good news. But then it goes on to say, you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Amen? There's bad success. I've watched people leave this church, go out and do other things and make bad success. It's ruined them. It's destroyed them. I've watched it destroy their marriage. I've watched it destroy their family. I've watched people go out and, and, and leave God. There's people all of a sudden, they get they start their own business. And if you want to, ushers, go ahead and you can receive this morning's tithes and offerings while I'm talking. Hallelujah. I've watched people, they got so wrapped up in the stuff, in the stuff, in the stuff, that they started leaving God out and it destroyed their marriage. Don't get so wrapped up in the stuff. Remember to give God credit. Remember to give God glory. Hallelujah. Because he's the one that's giving you the knowledge and the power to make your way prosperous. Hallelujah. And then you shall have good success. What is good success? Good success is the kind of success you can look back at and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The kind of success that people can look at you and say, how did you do this? How did you get here? And you can say, let me tell you, I serve a mighty God. And he's been very good to me. And you can have this same success too. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Yeah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Yeah. And I'm telling you what, I'm blessed by all the youth I see up in the balcony this morning. What's up, Donuts? You doing good? Yeah. All right. All right, all right. You guys are doing good. Y'all don't even know it, but I'm watching you sing along with the song. Some of y'all are up there like this. But I love it. I love watching y'all sing along. It's good. Hallelujah. 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 Well, let's do some more worship, shall we? Hallelujah. When the ushers have passed you by, go ahead and stand up with us this morning. We're going to continue to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You and me. 
it's, it's on Facebook, so there's no telling whether or not it's true, you know? I mean, you've all seen that commercial where the guy, you know, the girl starts dating the French model and he ends up being like an American nerd, <laughs> bonjour. But anyways, there's this thing I saw on Facebook that I thought was very interesting, and, and I hope that it's true because it looked really cool. <laughs> but there was this woman who was uh, interested in trying to find the sonic freq frequency of things, and so she rigged up this kind of microphone type deal that was able to find the sonic frequency of different kinds of objects. Like everything in the earth vibrates. That, that, that's a fact. Everything vibrates. Matter fi vibrates. Everything vibrates at a specific uh, speed, all right? So she actually had hooked up this intricate kind of, of microphone system uh, that was able to distinguish the sonic frequency of a sunflower, which is interesting in and of itself, but she was able to do it. She was able to mic the sound of a sunflower. And it was honest to God singing. And what's interesting to me about that is that the Bible says that if you won't praise me, the very rocks will cry out, glory to the living God. Hallelujah. And so what that says to me, that even if you are not praising and worshiping God, and even if you are not singing, the earth sings as to his glory because he is so good. Hallelujah. And the very rocks and the trees know that God is awesome, and they can't help but to sing his praises. Hallelujah. You see, the rocks and the trees know, and they haven't built any fancy machines, they just know God. I think sometimes we get too wrapped up in our own intellect thinking that we're too smart for God, but I want you to know, we're not. We're not too smart for God. The smarter we get and the more exploration that we do regarding space and time, the more we realize that we don't understand anything. And the more we realize that only something as amazing as God could put into motion what is into motion. There's so much about the planets that we've learned lately that's amazing to see how they rotate around and, and how everything spins and tilts and does the things that it does. And it never stops. It does it at the same time every year. Because the God of miracles put it into motion. And in motion it has stayed. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And all of his promises are yes and amen. And what he puts into motion, glory to God, it will come to pass. Hallelujah. So rejoice this morning knowing that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. Hallelujah. And that is worth rejoicing over. Hallelujah. The God of all creation. You are good? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 4, it says that the heir, as long as he's a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. So, you know, we are children of God, but God expects us to grow up, doesn't He? Yeah. And a song never head bowed. I just want you to tell the Lord, Lord, help me to grow up. Lord, I submit myself to you. Lord, help me to grow. Spirit, soul, and body. Father, I pray. Lord, help me to grow up. No more acting like a baby. No more acting like a child. But acting like the heir of God that I am. Thank you, Father, for helping me mature. Lord, in this place this morning, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I praise you. I worship you. I magnify you. In Christ Jesus, wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God we're children of God. But we're grown up children of God. Well, I believe that. We're, we're maturing and growing. God bless you. You can just go ahead and be seated. But we're maturing and growing all the time. The Bible says, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And that's how you grow is feeding on the word of God. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they're spirit and life. So the word of God is spirit food. And the more we feast on that spirit food, the stronger, the healthier our spirits become. Praise the Lord. So you're going to get a good dose this morning of the word of God. Amen. That'll help you in your spiritual growth. Hallelujah.
good to see everybody today. I believe you're in the right place today. Awesome praise and worship. Thanks. Thanks, Pastor Ben and all the team. We appreciate you all. Let's give them a hand. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Glory to God. Good to see everybody. Hallelujah. I want you to show me any Bibles, if you will, uh, to the book of James. That's right after the book of Hebrews. But in James chapter 1, James chapter 1, and I'm going to share the Word of God with you from James chapter 1. Praise the Lord. In James chapter 1, the Bible tells us there in verse 21, it says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the words of this book called the Bible would bounce off, of this, off the pages of this book today and, Lord, penetrate our heart. Lord, may it go deep within us, Father. Lord, that we may never forget, that we may never squander it, that we may never abuse it. Lord, may the word of God change our life from the inside out. And so, Father, I praise you and magnify you that you give me ears to hear, eyes to see, Father, and a heart that's able to receive the incorruptible Word of God. Lord, I thank you and I praise you and I magnify you for the anointing in this place this morning, the anointing that destroys yokes and removes burdens. Lord, we praise you that you're still the burden-removing, yoke-destroying God of the Bible. You're alive and well on planet Earth. And you're in this place this morning. And so, Father, we yield ourselves to you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We magnify you. In Christ Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible says here in verse 21 of, of James chapter 1 that uh, it says that we're to lay apart all filthiness of the flesh and superfluity of naughtiness, or that means just extreme wickedness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able... To save your souls. You know, uh, so we're our spirit, soul, and body. And you know that. You've been taught that. We are a spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body. So we're a three-part being. You know, just like God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. He's a triune being. Well, we're a triune being as well. Spirit, soul, and body. And uh, you are a spirit. Like I said, you, you are a spirit. And you have a soul and you live in a body. What was born again, and oftentimes we talk about having our soul saved, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But, uh, but really, it's our spirit man that was reborn. Right? Amen. It was our spirit man that was reborn. God, the Bible tells us there in 2 Corinthians 5, where is it, verse 17, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So we're a new creation. Our spirit man became... A new creation. We were born again. Praise God. So I got a brand new spirit. I didn't get one that was patched up. I didn't get a spirit that was healed. I didn't get a spirit that had a band-aid on it. Amen. I got a brand new one. When I was born again on October the 23rd, 1977. Amen. That's my spiritual birthday. And so, uh, so I, got a, I got a brand new spirit. But my body was the same. Amen. And my soulish man was the same as well. And the Bible says here that we're to receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save our soul. That word save is the Greek word sozo, S-O-Z-O. And it means deliverance, safety, soundness, healing, preservation. It means a lot of different things. But uh, it says receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save, deliver, amen, heal, amen, my soul. So and then, then the Bible tells us again in uh, Luke chapter 21, it says, Receive with meekness the engrafted word. No, it doesn't say that. It says, In your patience, possess ye your soul. In your patience, possess ye your soul. And Jesus said that. In your patience, possess ye your soul. Or in other words, take charge of your soul. Your soul is made up of your mind, will, and emotions. And so he said, Take charge of your mind, will, and emotions. Amen. We, you know, so we're, and he said, In your patience. So that, that denotes that there, there's, this doesn't happen overnight. I mean, if it happened overnight, then you wouldn't have to be very patient. But he said, in your patience, possess you your soul. So it takes some time to possess your soul. Take charge of it. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Sure. You know, you know, sometimes you think, why did that thought come to me? 
I mean, you're a child of God. You love God. But then all of a sudden, a, a, a thought will come to you. You think, why do I think about that? And sometimes it's not too holy of, th of, of thought that comes to you. And you think, why do I think of that? Because we're constantly in the, in the saving state of our soul. We're constantly getting that, you know, to that place we call saved. Amen. Delivered. Healed. Glory to God. And so that's what I want to talk to you this morning about is the deliverance or the salvation of your soul. Actually, the only way that can happen is to obtain a word-ruled mind. A word-ruled mind. Your, that means that your mind has to be ruled by the Word of God. Right. Amen. It's got, to be, it's got to be ruled by the Word of God. If my thought life doesn't line up with the Word of God, then I'm thinking the wrong things. If it's a Brother John, I just can't help it. I can't help what I think. Well, then I, I know your problem. Because you haven't been renewing your mind to the Word of God. You haven't been putting the Word of God on the inside of you. Amen. And even though you might have a saved spirit. And you may be going to heaven. Thank God. Amen. But you're still struggling in this life. And, and, I, and I believe this is where the, the battleground lies is in the area of the mind. That's where most of the battles are fought in the area of the mind. You know, the Bible says that Satan took Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple and said, you know, you know cast on, you know, uh, you know, cast yourself down. And he said, you know, uh, 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 and he's quoted the Word of God. You know, Satan quoted the Word of God. He said, he quoted Psalm 91. He said, well, God will give His angel charge over you to pick you up, lest you dash your foot against this stone. What did Jesus say? Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And then, and then uh, Satan took him and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. It says, if you'll bow down and serve me, you can have all these things. You can have all these kingdoms of the world. I'll give them to you. Well, how did he do that? The Bible says he did it in a moment of time. It was all in the area of the mind. Amen. I, it was all in the area of the mind. I showed him that all in the area of the mind. Amen. So if you you'll bow down and worship me, you know, I'll give you all these kingdoms. Somebody said one time, so, well, he was telling a lie because he didn't own those kingdoms. Yes, he did. Amen. Where do you think he got them? He got them from Adam. Adam sold out in the Garden of Eden. And, and Satan became the god of this world, the Bible says. The god of this world. And he began to rule this world. Rule, rule and govern this world. But Jesus came and re redeemed us. Amen. He, he took it back. Amen. amen. Praise God. So Jesus, amen, is Lord of heaven and earth. Glory to God. And so, uh, so he says, Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. When you were born again, your soul wasn't saved. Amen. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Amen. Your soul wasn't saved. It was your spirit man that was saved. It was, but, but we're in the constant state of saving our soul. Now, now look here. James chapter 1. Now he's talking to Christians. How do I know he's talking to Christians? People say, well, it sounds to me like he's talking to the Jews. No, this is a, 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 this is a book written to the church. And it says in James chapter 5, talks about, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. So he's talking about the church there. He's, he's talking about, to Christians here. He's talking to Christians. He calls them brethren in verse 2. So these are Christians that he's talking to. And so he says, you need to receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. So he's talking to, to Christians who evidently were in the process of getting their soul saved or their soul wasn't saved at the time. Now you say, well, Brother John, you just, that's just a play on words. But sometimes we need to be brought back to reality. You know, we'll say things and get in the habit of saying things over a period of time and take for granted that's the way it is. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You, you know, you were probably taught things all your life that is probably wrong, but, but you've heard it all your life, so you accept it as the truth. You accept it as the truth, and, 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 and all the time, it's not the truth at all. You know, it's just like, uh, you know, I've, I've told you this before, but I remember when I was a little boy, the rumor got out that you... You're not supposed to eat fish and drink milk at the same time because it will kill you. Now, now that was an old wife's tale of something. I don't know what, what, evidently somebody was eating some fish and they died drinking a glass of milk. I don't know why that started, but I remember that as a little boy. Remember that, that, that I was told that as a little boy. Does anybody else ever hear that? A few of you, yeah, praise the Lord. And so, uh, so I heard that all my life, but that's not the truth. That's not the truth. I've had, you know, that, that doesn't sound very good anyway. You think, why would you want to drink milk and eat fish, you know? Need a glass of iced tea with that. Amen. But, but anyway, that, we knew that wasn't the truth. 
But you know, every time I sat down at a table now, if there's fish and milk on that table, that thought goes through my mind. <laughs> Amen. And I'm sure that it may you, you too. Amen. But even though we know it's a lie. But the same is true about things in the Word of God. And so this thing about the soul is part of man. So Jesus said, in your patience possess ye your soul. That means it's going to take a little bit of time to do that. And, and how am I going to do that? Well, He tells us here by receiving the Word of God. We're feeding on the Word of God, feeding on the Word of God, feeding on the Word of God. The Word of God is spirit food. Just like I said earlier, John chapter 6. And I think it's what? John chapter 6 and verse about 67 or somewhere right in there. Uh, Jesus said... Thou shalt, uh, you know, every word that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. So we, we eat spirit food. Amen. His word, spirit food. And we feed on spirit food and we'll grow. And we'll mature. Amen. But getting back to our, our uh, world rule mind or a world, word rule mind or a world rule, a ruled mind. Amen. We've got to determine what's going to rule our mind. Are we going to let the world rule our mind or are we going to let the word rule our mind? Amen. So we, I, 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 I've decided I'm going to let the Word rule my mind. So if my thought life doesn't line up with the Word of God, then I'm going to have to do something about it. So we're in a constant state, constant state of getting our soul saved. Amen. Because, see, when, when you go to heaven, when you go to heaven, it's your spirit man that's going to go to heaven. Amen. And you're sure your mind, will, and emotion are going to be part of that too. Amen. But you might have to sit in a classroom a little while to learn some things. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no, nah, I'll take that back. I, that's not the word. You're not going to find that in the Word of God. But sometimes I think that's how it's going to be. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to have to grow up. Yeah. We're going to have to grow up. And we're going to have to make ourselves think the right things. Amen. You know what's ever true, pure, just, holy? Philippians chapter 4, you know, tells us verse 8 there. It says, oh, you know, all these things, whatever is pure, just, holy, righteous. Think on these things. So he's commanded us to think on this area of things in the Bible, Philippians chapter 4. He said, think on these things. So if my thought life is not lined up with, with Philippians chapter 4, then I'm thinking the wrong thing. And that should tell us immediately I need to quit thinking that way. I need to quit thinking that way. I need to stop it. I mean, stop thinking that way. I heard this preacher one time. He said he got off, uh, he, he got off the airplane in, in uh, Los Angeles. And I, I remember working in, in, uh, in Los Angeles. I flying into Los Angeles and I did some work out there one time when I was a young, unsaved man. And there's plenty of trouble you can get into an unsaved man in Los Angeles. But, uh, but anyway, I, I was working out there. And, uh, but but this, anyway, this man that, that I heard this preacher not too long ago talk about this. He said, you know, back in those days, he got off the airplane. He got off the airplane and he was going from the airport in the taxi cab to somewhere, wherever he's going, the hotel. And uh, there's a big billboard up there, and it's advertising this nightclub, and it said, it said, uh, topless waitresses. Well, it had the word topless, you know, etched out, and over here it had the word nude written beside that. So, nude waitresses. Amen. And uh, so, uh, so this preacher, th this preacher said, he said, I looked at that, and just for a moment he says, I might need to go over there and, and observe this because I, well, I know how to preach against it. <laughs> <laughs> then immediately he caught himself and right there in the taxi cab. No, I'm not going to do that. i got a pure mind, a holy mind. I will not allow you to think like that. Praise the Lord. The cab driver jumped, didn't know what was going on. you know. I mean, but he said, I had to capture that thought because if I let that thought run run wild in me to control my life. Yes. Amen. That's why, that's why pornography is so wrong. That's why pornography is so evil, it takes control of your mind. And people that are hooked on that stuff, they can't think about anything else. It just controls their mind. And so they have to take those thoughts, and the Bible says, cast those thoughts down. That means that you've got to get violent with your thought life. Bless God, if that, my thoughts are not lining up with the Word of God, I'm not going to think them. You know, the Bible says, I read this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 uh, Thessalonians chapter 5 says, study to be quiet. Now, have you ever studied to be quiet? Just sit there and don't think nothing? 
I mean, you can sit down with your mind going 90 to nothing all the time. I'm not going to think about anything I'm going to see here. I'm going to be quiet. You know, that's why he said study to be quiet. I mean, it takes some effort to do that. Sometimes you need to shut your mind down. You need to, you need to just shut it down. I'm going to, I'm, you're not in charge of my life. I'm in charge of, of you. And see, the spirit man is really what controls our life. I mean, he's in charge of our soulish man and our physical man as well. You know, there in uh, Romans chapter 1 and verse 2, the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, whole and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. So our flesh man wasn't born again. Our soulish man wasn't born again. Amen. Our soul and our flesh wasn't born again. We're to renew our mind to the Word of God. Amen. And present our body a living sacrifice. Amen. Our, our spirit, man, you didn't have to do anything. Amen. Except make Jesus Lord of your life and your spirit, man, born again. Amen. But we've got to grow. Amen. We're, we're children of the living God, but we, we need to make our, uh, our, get an environment where our spirit, man, can grow. Praise God. And study the Word of God where we can capture our thoughts. Our, our soulish man can, can grow as well. Hallelujah. And then our body line up with the Word of God too. Amen. So, so if I'm attacked in my physical body, I know that it's God's will for me to be healed. Because the Bible says by His stripes we were healed. And if we were healed, honey, we are healed. So I know any attack on my body is not from God. And a lot of people have a hard time getting, getting around that. But uh, that's where sickness comes from. It doesn't come from God. God doesn't make anybody sick. Amen. God doesn't make anybody sick. So, so if my body is attacked, I know it's not God doing it. So I, who, who am I going to go after? I'm going after Satan. Amen. No, I don't I won't allow you, Satan, to attack my body. In the name of Jesus, you have to pack your bags and leave because the Bible says by his stripes I'm healed. But what do we do most of the time? Well, God may be doing this for a lesson. God, maybe God's doing this to teach me something. And you know, you won't find anywhere in the Word of God where it says God put sickness on you to teach you something. No, it doesn't, it doesn't say that anywhere in the Word of God. As a matter of fact, it says that I've given unto you uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting or the maturing of the saints. Amen. That's what the Bible says there. Uh, where is that? Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. Uh, so it says that uh, we're to, uh, that, uh, that we are spirit, soul, and body. But it says that God has given unto us uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of maturing of the saints. Everybody needs a pastor. I need a pastor. Amen. Amen. Why? For me to mature. For me to grow. Praise the Lord. If you can't receive from me as your pastor, find one that you can. Find one that's teaching you something, causing you to grow. And you need to be growing. You need to be growing. If you're not mature, you're not growing, then maybe I'm not doing my job. Amen. Amen. You won't hear many preachers admit that. But, uh, but it could be my fault if the church is not... Growing spiritually, I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned about numerically. No, I am concerned, but, but I'm more concerned about growing spiritually than I am numerically. Amen. I mean, I want you to grow, and I want you to mature, and I want you to walk triumphant in this earth. Yes. And when we stand before God, we've got to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, so He wants us to grow in spirit, soul, and body. But I've got to make my body do some things it don't want to do. Right. Amen. I remember when I quit smoking cigarettes. I, I smoked cigarettes when I got saved. Don't suck the air out of the, the building because, you know, uh, we were, I wasn't a, a, a preacher all my life. Amen. I was 28 years old when I got saved. 28 years old when I got saved and I smoked cigarettes and drank booze and chased women just like everybody else did at that age most of the time. Amen. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching you. Amen. But... Uh, but when I got born again, old things passed away and all things became new. Amen. I went home that day and I had some Jack Daniels and I poured it down the sink. Amen. Because I was born again. And, and, and don't let this shock you either. That I had some marijuana. And I, I got rid of it. I had a little hard time getting rid of that because I didn't want it to grow in the yard. So I thought what I need to do with this. So I could take a little bit and eat in each garbage can, put a little bit where it gets get scattered. Amen. But I got rid of it. I had some magazines that I shouldn't have had. Got rid of them. Throwed them in the dumpster. Amen. I cleansed my house of everything that I thought was detrimental to me. Praise the Lord. So, so I wasn't always a Christian. I, was, I, I had to do exactly like you do. I have to renew my mind with the Word of God. 
So I had to get rid of all that stuff. And, and any time those thoughts would come to me, I thought, I'm not thinking that way anymore. No, I don't think that way anymore. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I remember one time, one time there was a, a woman called me. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know and, and she was, we'd had some conversation before, but see, I'm saved now. And I, you know, and I thought, you know, at first, the first time she called, you know, I just talked to her a little while, hung up. Amen. And the next day or two, she called again. Amen. And that, and that time she called, you know, got a little bit more intimate there. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God got on me. Bless God. I said, I want you to know I got born again last Sunday. I'm a child of God. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Amen. And you need to be saved too. Amen. Click. She hung up. I ain't heard from her since. Amen. And that was in 1977. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, uh, so we have to cast those thoughts down. Amen. The Bible says that we're to, of course, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we're to cast every thought and every imagination down that, that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. Amen. See, every, every sin that you commit, it starts in the area of the mind. Amen. Amen. You begin to think, you know, you just don't wake up one morning and, you know, in bed with somebody else and, well, how did I get here? <laughs> no, you plan that thing out. You planned that thing out. You thought on it. You planned it out. You fantasized about it. You got it all worked out in your mind where you wouldn't get caught. Amen. And then you committed the sin. Same way as a, same way a thief would do. Thief would uh, go in. Oh, why did I rob that bank? No, he, he thought about that first. He, I mean, he probably thought he's smarter than everybody else. Amen. Because everybody else has got caught, but I ain't going to get caught. Amen. So, so he does something stupid like goes in and robs a bank. But he don't do that just spur of the moment. He thinks that thing out. He plans that thing. Amen. Now, now there are some things, some things that are automatic like lying. Amen. You don't have to think, now, my, should I tell them the truth? Should I tell them a lie? Some people lied so much that's just what comes out of their mouth. Amen. I've known people that lied so much they, they believe their lies. Amen. They, 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 they begin to believe their lies. And so, uh, so the, 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 the sins that come from the soulish air, that's where they start. That's the battleground. I really believe that's the battleground it, with the devil is in the area of the mind. And say, well, you know, I, well, I might miss out on this or I might miss out on that. What if the church is wrong? What if the Bible's wrong? Bless God, I challenge you. Read the Bible from cover to cover. Then you, you ask me, is the Bible wrong? I've never known anybody... They read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation that come up and said, the Bible's wrong. Amen. Amen. Never have and never will. Never have and never will. I had a professor one time, you know, in, in secular college, that he, he said he didn't believe the Bible. He, but I, I guarantee he probably never read the Bible. Amen. But I want you to know something. I've read the Bible through many times. And every time I think there's something wrong with it, God will show me the answer. Amen. No, the Bible's true. Men have died. Men have perished. Uh, preserving the, the Word of God. And very seldom will a man die for a lie. Amen. But anyway, I don't want to get on that this morning. We're talking about taking charge of our soulish man. Ta taking charge of our mind. Go, go with me to the book of Ephesians, if you will. Ephesians chapter 4. Praise the Lord. God is good, isn't He? When you get over there to Ephesians 4, say amen. amen. All right, that's enough of you. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verse 17. Ephesians chapter 4, Paul speaking here, he says in verse 17, This I say therefore in testifying the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being fat past feelings have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned God, Christ. You have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard Him and have been taught by Him as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Praise God. And that you put on the new man which after, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now look there in, in verse 23. It says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You know, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of 
power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. So we have a sound mind. Praise God. He said, uh, you know, our, you could say a sound soul. God had me. We ought to be constantly strengthening our soulish man. Because that's where most of your battles are going to be, be fought. Amen. If he, if he were to attack you with a sword coming after you, you know, you'd know how to fight. But he gets into those little thoughts, those little thoughts, those little things coming to you, and you start forming a thought pattern. Uh, a thought pattern begins to be established in your thinking, and, and that's, the way, that's what governs you, and that's what rules you, is that thought pattern. And, uh, and then that thought pattern will eventually develop into a stronghold. You know, the Bible talks about strongholds. So to become a stronghold of the mind. And then there's people like that that, you know, they've, they've allowed their thought life just to go away and haven't taken control of their thought life. And, and because they haven't taken control of, of their thought life, you know, a stronghold is developed. And now it's going to take some work to get rid of it. It's more than just casting it down. It, there needs to be some deliverance take place. Amen. There needs to be some battles fought. Amen. So, dear God, don't let it grow into a stronghold. Get rid of it. Take charge of that thing now. And so we begin to develop our thought process by renewing our mind. Renewing our mind. See, when you got born again, you didn't think a whole lot different. Your, 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 thought, your thought life was pr stayed pretty much the same. That's why he said you've got to possess your soul. You've got to get your soul saved. It's because when you were born, I was born again on October 23rd, 1977. My thoughts, you know, pretty much stayed intact. Not, that's a few things changed. But, but, but most of the time... It, it pretty much stayed stayed the same. See, you know, today, in the in this congregation, you know, you're the product of your upbringing. Most most of you are a product of your upbringing. You are a, uh, you know, if you, you people go to like a certain type of church because that's how their parents took them to church, to that type of church, and uh, they vote a different, uh, you know, for a particular political party because that's how they were raised. To, to, to think like that. You know, that this is how, you know, so it's been instilled in them, whether it's right or wrong. Yeah. A lot of times, we'll grab hold of that. And we'll grab hold of that thought pattern, you know, because, well, this is the way we've always done it. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. My, 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 my daddy was an Auburn fan. My mama was an Auburn <laughs> And I'm going to be an Auburn fan. That's a joke, guys. Yeah. Come on, don't be so uh, solemn on me this morning. No, thank God they wasn't Auburn fans. <laughs> and I know all you Auburn people, I ain't got Pete here to, that, to rub it in on him, so. Anyway. No, I got a granddaughter. I, I, pay, I helped pay my granddaughter way to through college at, at, uh, at, at Auburn. I helped a little bit anyway. But her mom and daddy did most, but she got a scholarship. Amen. Now she's in law school at the University of Alabama. Praise the Lord. <laughs> The light came on. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, what was I talking about? <laughs> Amen. We're, we're to grow on the Word of God when we're born again. Amen. We, got, we need to feed on the Word. Feed on the Word until we, we change. You know, a lot of times people look at, look at me when I tell my testimonies about things. I can't believe, Brother John, you tell people such stuff. Well, I'm just being truthful with you. I don't know anybody in this room that lived a sanctified, holy life before you got saved. Do you? I don't know anybody. And if you say you did, you're lying. We'll come on down. We'll pray for you. Deliver you from that foul spirit of lying. Amen. Because I know you did. We've all sinned, come short of the glory of God. Some of us are just more honest to let you know we did it. Amen. So anyway, we're talking about renewing our mind. We'll get our mind renewed to the Word of God. Put the Word of God on the end. Let, let our mind be ruled by the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? And see, the Bible tells us there in, in uh, Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34, it, it says there, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth's going to speak. So whatever I'm putting in, in me is going to come out of my mouth. And then he tells us there in Matthew 6, 33, it says, take no thought saying. Jesus said, take no thought saying. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we put, put on? 
For after all these things do the Gentiles see. So, so he says, he, he tells us there, don't, don't speak your thoughts. I mean, just because those thoughts come. Like I heard somebody say, you know, you can't keep a bird from flying over your head. But you can keep it from building a nest in your hair. Amen. So you can't stop those thoughts from coming. Amen. But you can stop them. Amen. The thoughts may come. And thoughts may persist. But thoughts unspoken die unborn. Amen. Kenneth E. Hagin said that. Amen. Thoughts may come and thoughts may persist, but thoughts unspoken die unborn. So don't, don't just let anything come out your mouth. Because whatever you're thinking on, whatever you're pondering on, eventually it's going to come out your mouth. And when it comes out your mouth, it's going to put into motion those things in the world. The Bible says there in James chapter 3 that the tongue sets on fire the course of nature. So our words will set on fire or speed it up the course of nature. Nature says that you're going to die. Well, your tongue can speed up that process. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is, it is speeded up. So you have to take control of your tongue. The Bible tells us in uh, Psalms 23 and verse 7, it, it tells us there, it says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So whatever you meditate on, whatever you're thinking on, that's what you're going to become. Amen. That, that's what you, if you think you're just an old sinner saved by grace, you are a sin, you'll be a sinner the rest of your life. Now, I'm not saying that you don't sin. But as long as you confess you're a sinner, you'll always be a sinner. As long as you confess you're an alcoholic. People say, you know, like they go to those uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, places like that. They say the first thing they do is stand up and say, I, I'm an alcoholic. My name is Joe and I'm an alcoholic. I mean, no, no, you ought to get up and say, my name is Joe. I used to be an alcoholic, but... On such and such a date, I was born again. Old things passed away and all things became new. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I am not an alcoholic anymore. That's what you ought to be saying. But as long as you confess you're just an old sinner, guess what? You're going to be an old sinner. Amen. You're, you're leaving the door open for you to sin. You're leaving the door cracked for sin to get in and control your life. So you've got to control your thoughts. Control your mind. I mean, you're in charge, not the devil, not the devil. So, so we're to control our thought pattern. Don't let it become a stronghold. If you see something dangerous there, don't be ashamed to come to, to me or somebody and say, Pastor, I need some help. Help me get rid of this. Help me to change my thought pattern. But I'm going to tell you something. If you come to me for that, we're going to pray with you. And it's going to be more than just a little prayer. I mean, I'm not going to rub your hair up and mess your hair up you know, spit on you and do all this, you know, to get the devil to come out of you, and I'm not going to do that. Now, I will pray for you, but I'm going to give you some homework to do. And if you don't do your homework, I ain't fooling with you. Hey, Amen. you go somewhere else, get deliverance. But there's going to be some work to do. Because you didn't get in that shape overnight, and honey, you're not going to get out of it overnight. No, c controlling your thoughts. Yeah, that, that takes some effort to control your thoughts. Amen, but you've got to start somewhere. Amen. And so, so quit watching so much TV. Amen. You know, you know you see what people watch so much TV, they start thinking. That's why people think like that, because they're being fed that all, all day long. All day long. You know, you sort of keep up with how much TV you watch, you know. Now, now I've, I've got in the habit, y'all forgive me if, I, if this is wrong, but I've got in the habit when I go to bed at night, gun smoke comes on at 9 o'clock. <laughs> and and so, so I've got in the habit of watching gun smoke right, you know, from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, amen, gun smoke's on there. Actually, it goes from 9 to 10, and then another version comes on from 10 to 11. But I ain't staying up that late. <clears throat> so I turn it off at 10. Uh, but, but, you know, every night I've watched gun smoke this week, there have been four or five people killed every episode. And Matt, he's been shot four or five times. <laughs> and uh, so I know there's probably scars all over his body. But see, there's so much death on that. Even though it's innocent, there's not a cuss word in that show. Amen. But there's a whole lot of killing. A whole lot of revenge. 
And you know what it begins to instill in you? Revenge. Revenge. You saw how he treated Chester. You've got to get some revenge. And boy, old Matt gives him revenge. He'll, 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 yeah, you know, and, and Bert Lancaster, he's, a, he's a, the blacksmith on that thing. Quinn, I think, is his name. You know, you know and, and uh, Festus calls him Comanche. Bert Reynolds. Yeah, Bert Reynolds, yeah. And uh, he calls him Comanche, as Festus does. Now, Festus is my hero, just to be honest with you. But, uh, but anyway, they all want revenge. Uh, in a show just that innocent. It'll begin to instill in you. You've got to get revenge. Yeah, yeah. Bless God. Uncle Fred treated me that way when I was a little kid. I wouldn't go to his funeral for nothing. I'm not going to go around him. I'm not going to do anything with him. Hey, Amen. What? Revenge. But I'll get him back just as sure. I'll get him back. I got in a fight with a bus driver one time when I was in high school. Hey, Amen. Everybody say, I love my pastor. Okay. I got in a fight with a bus driver when I was in high school. Hey, Amen. And, and after I got, and he's a big man. And I'm just a little bitty, 135 pound guy. <clears throat> but anyway, I thought, I'm going to get him. I'm gonna, I might get, not get him today. I might not get him tomorrow, but I'm going to get him. Sooner or later, I'm going to get him. He better watch his step. And I told him that too. I said, You better watch it because I'm going to get you. It may not be today, it might not be tomorrow, it might not be next month, but I'm going to get you. Amen. And when I got saved, guess what happened? That was the first man on my list that I forgave. Yeah, right. Amen. That was the first guy on my list that I said, Lord, don't hold that sin to his charge. I forgive him. You forgive him. And I, I began to love the man. Amen. Praise the Lord. But, you know, thank God to change you. Amen. God to change you. But see, we feed on stuff like that all the time. You know, you start talking like them, acting like them. You're around the wrong people all the time. Amen. You start acting like them, talking like them. Yeah. Amen. Well, you have to renew your mind. No, that's, that's not right. And if it takes getting away from people like that, get away from them. Amen. Amen. Turn the TV off. If you can't control your thought life, turn the TV off. Amen. Turn your TV off. But, 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 you know, don't go into a place you know you're going to be tempted. Don't put yourself in a place of temptation. Stay away from it. Stay away from it. So anyway, the Bible says... Amen. That there's no weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon. So no matter what the devil does to, to attack you, it's not going to prosper. Now, now listen to this. See, we've been taught all our lives certain things like it's God, you know, God puts you on your back and gets you to look up. That's a lie. Don't swallow that thought. No, begin to think. No, the, the, the Bible says by his stripes I was healed. So bless, I'm standing for my healing. The Bible says that He's given us power to get wealth. I mean, Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. He's given us power to get wealth. But we might hear, with well, you've been broke all your life. Your mom and daddy never had anything. You know, you, you, you'll never amount to anything. You'll never have anything more than you got right today. You need to say, no, devil! Bless God. The Bible says that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Praise God. God is not a respecter of persons. Yeah. And see, there's, got, there's so many people got such a poverty mentality. They may have a pocket full of money, but they got a poverty mentality. You know, and I'll get on that someday, maybe here soon, about overcoming a poverty mentality. Honey, the poor people called us poor when I was, when I was growing up. And so we, we were poor. And that, you know, we developed a poverty mentality. And then I went to college, you know, got good jobs. And, uh, you know, going to make something out of my life. Amen. But see, that mentality, that thinking is still there. So until I got saved, and then you have to renew it to the Word of God. No, I don't think that way anymore. Amen. Glory to God. I don't think poverty anymore. As a matter of fact, I got, pretty, I got a pretty high standard. Amen. And I got an expensive taste. Amen. It's just the way I is. Amen. But, uh, but you have to renew your mind to that. And when your thinking changes, your situation changes. Amen. Everything changes when your thinking begins to change. Amen. Glory to God. You're no longer the victim. You're the victor. Amen. Glory to God. You're victorious. Hallelujah. 
And then that's the way it, you'll just begin to carry yourself that way. And the devil will see it. God will see it. People will see it. Glory to God, things will begin to change in your life. While wow, you've taken charge of your soul. Amen. You've got your soul saved. Now you and your spirit are the majority. Amen. Over your flesh. And you can control your flesh. Amen. That's how you control it. That's how you can overcome sin and live victorious in your life. Amen. And we can do that, can't we? Our best is yet to come. Amen. Don't judge me until the end and the end hasn't come. Our best is yet to come. Praise the Lord. Best is yet to come. So don't give up. Don't surrender. Don't give in. But when those thoughts come, cast it down. Now listen, you've got to know what the Word says before you can cast it down. What does the Bible say? So if you'll do just this simple thing every night, every night before you go to bed, or you can do it in the morning, whichever, but I find it better to do it at night time. But if, before you go to bed at night, read some in the Bible. Just some. You, don't, you know, if you set four or five chapters, you ain't going to do it. Amen? Because you'll get sleepy and you'll quit. But you can read some. Amen? The more you do it, the easier it becomes. And so you begin to read the Bible. Before you know it, you have the Bible read through all the way. Amen? Spend most of your time in the New Testament. Don't worry about so much about the Old Testament. Read it, but spend the majority of your time in the New Testament. So if you spend 10 minutes in the Old Testament, spend at least 12 minutes in the New Testament. But, but spend some time in the Word of God. And you begin to change the way you think. Begin, and if you change the way you think, you begin to change the way you act. And you change the way you act, you begin to live a different way. Amen. Your life will change. I promise you. But you've got to do this little bit of homework. Read a little bit of the Word of God every day. Amen. Amen. There, there's your hope. There's your answer. Amen. But Brother John, I don't understand it. Well, I didn't either when I started reading it, but I read it anyway. Amen. I, I didn't under, I, there's a lot I don't understand today. But I just keep on reading it. But I know a whole lot more today than I did. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So God is good, isn't He? Amen. All the time, God is good. Hallelujah. Well, let me have, you ha head, have your heads bowed and your eyes closed. If there's anybody here this morning that's lost, and when we say lost, just let me make it clear to you, that means that if you died today, you'd go to hell. And people say, well, Brother John, I don't know. I don't know if I would or not. Yeah, you do. If you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, then you're going to hell. It's that simple. If you've never accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to hell. And uh, so, but He's made it easy for you. He's made it uh, easy for you to be born again. You can be born again today. Praise God. You don't have to cut your hair or dress a different way. Do any of those things. God's dealing with your spirit man. And so if you're here this morning and God is knocking at the door of your heart saying you need to get saved, you need to get things right, Amen. You know things are not right. You need to get things right. Amen. Then this, this altar call is for you. Or you may be here today and you say, Pastor, I'm a born again. I was born again in such and such time, but I backslid. I got away from God. And I need to get things right with God. Pastor, would you pray for me? And so if you're here this morning and you say, Yes, Pastor, that's me. I'm lost. I'm backslid. I'm out of the will of God. I need to get things right with God. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to stand up. I'm not going to ask you to come down this aisle. I'm not going to ask you to kneel here at the front. I'm not going to point you out in any way. But while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I'm making it easy for you. While your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, no one looking, everybody in an attitude of prayer. Where I'll know how to pray, where I'll know how to pray for you, if this is you that I'm talking to, Raise your hand right now. Just slip it up. I'll see it. You can put it back down. I see that hand. See that hand. Two hands have gone up. Any, any more? I see that hand. God bless you. Put it down. Anybody? Three hands. Anybody else? Three hands that have been risen. Amen. Anybody? All right. I'm going to pray for you. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to make it as easy for you as easy can be. Because Jesus made it easy for me. So I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. 
And I want you to say it out loud. Let your ears hear your mouth say these words that we're about to pray. But in order to make it easy for you, I want the whole congregation. I want the whole congregation to pray it out loud. But Brother John, I'm already a Christian. It's not going to hurt you to pray it again. But it's going to help those that are surrendering their life to the Lord. They raise their hand. All right, so I want you to, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. So you repeat after me, everybody in the house. Say this prayer out loud together. Say, Dear Lord, please forgive me for all my sins. I'm sorry for the sins that I've, forgive, uh, that I've committed. And I ask you to forgive me of those sins. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Live in me. And Lord, to the best of my ability, and with your help, I'll serve you the rest of my life. Help me, Lord, to live this life. Teach me your word. Give me godly friends. Surround me with godly people. Lord, move into my house. And Lord, I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Now, those three people that raised their hand, and anybody else, you may have, do you mind not raise your hand, but you needed to. If you said that prayer in sincerity, you're born again. You're a child of God. Now, I'm going to give you some homework. I want you to do three things as a child of God. I want you to read your Bible every day. I want you to pray every day. And I want you to come to church as much as you can. And if you don't like this church, find one that you do. Amen. But if you'll do those three things, your life will never be the same. And you'll grow and you'll be strong and you'll be able to help others. Amen. We'd love to have you here. This is an awesome place. But if you can't worship with us, find somewhere where you can. Amen. God is good, isn't He? Amen. Praise the Lord. Now then, is there anybody here this morning, you're sick in your body? Are you like hands laid upon you for healing? Because I believe God is concerned about your spirit, soul, and body. And if you're like hands laid upon you for healing, then you raise your hand or stand up or do something where I can get your attention. Anybody like hands laid on you for healing? Philip, anybody come here? Let me pray with you. Hallelujah. Everybody stretch out your hands. Hallelujah. I need strength. I went through a, a you know, I went through something big because of cataract. Okay. Okay. I need strength. I'm being staggered most of the time, even, even okay. yesterday. Everybody stretch out your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we reverently and boldly place our hands upon our brother according to your word. Yeah. You said, Father, these signs would follow them to believe that lay hands on the sick and the sick would recover. So Lord, I praise you, Father, that as I lay hands upon Philip, I do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you that he is in the recovery mode from this day forward until he complete total healing comes and his body is restored to health in the name of Jesus. And Satan, any tactics or maneuvers you've, you've wrought against my brother, we rebuke you in Jesus' name command you to release him. Let him go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, today is member, new member recognition day. And uh, you know, when I first started pastoring the church, I said, well, we're not going to take members. Anybody comes, you know, let them come. We just love on them and teach them and minister to them. But we live in a society where there's no, not much commitment. And so the Lord rebuked me for that. And He said, no, you, you, need to, you need to teach them commitment. You know, like I'm committed to my wife and children. I'm committed to this church too. Amen. And so, so you, people need to learn how to be committed to something. I mean, people, that's why people live together and never get married. They're not really committed. And the reason they don't get married, they don't want to enter into that covenant relationship because they, they, they don't leave the door open where they can walk out at any time. I can walk away from that relationship anytime because we're not married. That's what they think. That's what they think. So we got that mentality. If you don't watch, you don't watch it, it'll get into the church. So that's why I started taking membership. The Bible says, know those who, that labor among you. So I need to know those who labor among us. I mean, I know the, those that I can call upon. You know, if I need help in some area, I can call upon some of you all. 
Amen. Because I, I know who you are. I, I, I know the ones that are committed. So, so I, can, I can go to them and, and they can help me out. Just like my kids know they can come to me anytime. Anytime. And I'll help them any way I can. Well, that's the way I want to be with the church. You come to me anytime and I'll do what I can to help you. But that shoe's on the other foot as well. If I come to you and say, hey, I need somebody to work in the nursery today. Could you help us out? Pastor, I'd love to. Amen. That's what we're yearning to see. Amen. Amen. So, so being, just being committed, that's what we'd like to do. So I want to recognize our new members. If you've gone through our membership process, our membership class, and this is how you become a member of the Catholic Christian Fellowship. We got a member's manual in the bookstore, the last door on the left on the way out. This tells you everything that we believe as a church. It tells you a little bit about our history. It tells you about our church. They're free. They don't cost you anything. You pick one up. They got a bunch of CDs in there where I've taught, where I've taught on the Word of God, taught what we believe. Amen. So when you get through with this manual, let it tell you what to do. Amen. And, and then uh, we'll recognize you as a member, and then we'll start using you, praise God, as a member. Amen. But, uh, but anyway, I'd like to recognize our members. So if you've gone to our members process, would, would, you, uh, would you go ahead and stand up? And come on, anybody? I know there's some. Mitch, all right, Bridget, amen. Y'all, y'all come. We're going to pray over you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, you can, Deacon. No, come on. Come on, we'll pray with you. Amen. Uh, you're, you're, not get, we're, you're not getting into anything that, that uh, you know, I, I don't want you to six months from now, oh, I didn't know y'all believe that. No, no, you know what we believe. Amen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, His power. He's coming again. He was, he was crucified for my sins. He was buried in the grave. Up from the grave He arose, praise God, triumphant over all His foes. Praise God. And He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And He says, I'm coming back. Yes. Hallelujah. So this, these are our new members. And uh, we're so honored, amen, that you would accept us, accept our church family. Praise God. So it, I know it's a big deal. This is a big deal. And so we, we appreciate that. But you know, as a family, you know, I, I got a wife and two kids and uh, five grandchildren. And, uh, you know, we get along most of the time. Most of the time, we get along. But there are some times, amen, that we get cross with each other just a little bit. Just a little bit. But we still love each other at the end of the day. So, you know, there, there stands a chance that I might tick you off. Amen. There stands a chance that you might tick me off. But you know what? At the end of the day, I'm still going to love you. Amen. I'm still going to treat you as family. Amen. I'm, I'm going. We're, we're going to work the problems out. Amen. Because we're in covenant. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we're committed to the success of the mission and the call of this church. Amen. Praise God. So would everybody just reach out your hands to these people. Let, let's pray with them. Oh, Father God, we praise you and magnify you for this precious couple. Thank you, Father, for sending them to us. Lord, help us to bless them, develop their gifts and talents. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, that they would be happy at this place. And Lord, we'd all flow together and be strong at the return of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for this precious couple. Lord, I lift them up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Lord, I thank you and praise you that you brought them to us, Father to care for them, Lord, to protect them. These are your sheep, Father, and I recognize that. But thank you, Father, for allowing us, Lord, to take care of them. And we pray, Father, that we'll do all that we can to take care of them. And Lord, that we'll help them to develop their gifts and talents. And Lord, bring, helping them, Lord, to succeed in life. Lord, we thank you for it. We accept them into membership in the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you for this family, Father. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in their lives, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for bringing them all the way to Alabama. (laughs) 
Hallelujah, Lord, to be a part of this church. Lord, we believe that. Lord, we believe they're not here by accident, but they're here on divine uh, commission from you. And so, Father, we thank you and we praise you that you give us wisdom and understanding how to care for them, how to provide for them, how to develop their gifts. Lord, we thank you for it. We commit ourselves to them as they commit themselves to us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, I praise you. Magnify you, Father, for my sweet sister, Father. Lord, thank you for bringing her to us. Thank you for entrusting her to us, Father, that we might take care of her, provide for her, and strengthen her, and show her, Father, things that she's never seen before, hearing things that she never heard before. But, Father, helping her to grow spirit, soul, and body in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. Father, help us, Lord, to develop her gifts, talents, and abilities, Father, utilizing them for the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you for it. We commit ourselves to her as she commits herself to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you all. Let's give them a hand. Praise the Lord. Glory to God forevermore. Now, now, Steve, I'm going to let you say y'all's last name because I can't pronounce it. Turka. Turka. You need to know if you see Wade Road down. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And this is, Deacon, what's y'all's last name? Widener. Widener, yeah. This is the Widener family. Hallelujah. For y'all to know that. Amen. This is uh, Mitch, <laughs> Suzanne, uh, Mitchell. Foster. Foster. Why'd I do that? <laughs> He just been coming nearly a year. I already know that by now. Boss, yeah, amen. And this is Bridget Miller. Amen. So let's give him a hand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And you can't forget these guys. Amen. Because they're here all the time. <laughs> amen. All right. Glory to God. God bless you all. All right. Everybody blessed? Let's all stand up then. Y'all can go back and be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask my uh, prayer team to come at this time. You go ahead and come. If you need prayer about anything that we did not cover, you'd just like for us to pray with you about something, you come and let us pray. We've got a group of people up here that know how to pray. God bless you. We love you. You're dismissed. Go rejoicing. We'll see you next time. Be blessed. Have a great day.